What's going on everybody? My name is Jordan. I'm the head coach here at Sabersim and I wanted to do a video today talking about Sabersim's powerful contest flashback tool. Contest flashback is a way to look at past contests on DraftKings and see what lineups were played, what players were the most profitable, and ultimately study and review a slate that has already passed to figure out ways to improve your DFS process. Now, uh, I was talking to another subscriber about this earlier this week, and this person asked me when I was talking about contest flashback, if the slate has already passed and you can't change anything, what's the point of review? And I think that's a really good question. There's a couple different reasons I think contest flashback is so useful and really two use cases that I think it's best used for. The first is to just make sure that you are on the right track. We talk a lot in a lot of our other videos about how high the variance is in DFS. In our profit plan video, I mentioned that profitable players should really only expect to even profit at all about five to seven days a month playing every single day. And most of your winnings in DFS when you're playing GPPs come from one or two big wins a season. Well, if you're playing GPPs every single day and you're actually living that process out, it's very hard to know if you're on the right track. If you're losing or you're having a down couple weeks or even a down month, it's hard to know, am I playing poorly or do I just need to weather the swings of this variance until I give myself enough time to realize my profit? Well, Contest Flashback, because it leverages Saberson simulations, will show you if you played a slate in a way that would be profitable over the long term. If that slate were to play out 100,000 times, would you be profitable? The other thing that's very useful about Contest Flashback is you can see what other sharp players did to have very high sim ROI portfolios. You can combine this with the build review revise process we talk about when you're building your lineups on Sabersim to help answer any questions you had while you were building your lineups. How did sharp players handle a particular chalky player who was projected very well and you weren't sure if you wanted to be over or under the field? What types of stacks and lineup constructions did other sharp players use? You can use contest flashback to answer those questions as well. So I want to dive in here and talk a little bit about how I use contest flashback. Basically every day I sit down in the morning to enter my my lineups for that night's slate of games. I want to start by explaining what Contest Flashback is actually doing behind the scenes. So after a slate has passed on DraftKings, we'll take the vast majority of contests that were on DraftKings that night and take the actual lineups that were played by players in that contest, and we will use our contest sims to re-simulate that particular slate. So we'll take each lineup that was actually played at the end of the night, and we will run it through hundreds of thousands of simulations using our play-by-play -play sims of each game, assign new fantasy points for each sim to each player in the lineup, calculate the winnings that that lineup would have actually won if that slate played out that way, and repeat that process 100,000 times. We can do that to then recalculate the expected ROI of particular players, particular portfolios of individual lineups. So what you see here in contest flashback is generally side by side, what were the actual outcomes that were achieved? So actual ROI, actual profit, alongside sim ROI, what was the expected, what was in the uh, simulation sample, what was the ROI of that player, what was the average profit of the in the sim for that particular player. So what this is allowing you to do is compare what happened in the individual outcome that took place last night against what would happen on this slate if it had played out 100,000 times. So I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch here and basically return to my contest tab from the NBA main slate from last night. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my contest here. So I played the $1.20 max on this particular slate last night. I actually had a decent night. I was profitable last night, but I wanna see how I did overall. Was I expected to be profitable over the long term? So I'm gonna expand the players column here. And what I typically like to do is I like to see what did other players that played the same number of lineups I did in this contest do. So other players that maxed 20 lineups in here, and I'm going to sort by sim ROI. So this is the, in theory, the most long-term profitable players of this contest last night that played at least 20 lineups. If this, if this slate played out 100,000 times last night, who would be the players that were expected to have the most profit at the end of those 100,000 iterations of the slate? And I'm down here, and I played, uh, according to Sabersim's contest sims in a profitable way, uh, one of the more profitable players on the slate. And again, I made $26 playing this contest last night, but that's not always the case. And really, that's probably one of my five to seven profitable nights of NBA this entire month. Uh, I have a lot of days where I'm not profitable. And coming back in here and checking and seeing that your sim ROI is 
is profitable just means that you're on the right track. You probably played pretty well regardless of how last night actually went. And this is just a really nice mental check to make sure you're on the right track. Where this is most valuable is on sports or contest types where I'm on a little bit of a downswing. I will be completely honest with you, it hasn't been my year in NFL so far. I think I've had one profitable year on main slates out of the entire year, but I come in on Monday morning every single week to check my sim ROI and make sure that I played in a profitable way and know that the variance will swing my way eventually. I'll get an opportunity to realize that sim ROI, that uh, expected profit that I'm seeing here in the contest flashback. So the very first thing I like to do, again, this is just a mental check, is to come back in, check how I graded out on my sim ROI in the contest that I actually played, make sure I'm on the right track. But where I think there is actually a lot of value in Contest Flashback as a research and study tool is seeing what other sharp players did with their lineups and using it as a tool to learn more about DFS and learn maybe ways that you can improve your process. So what I like to do for that is I like to take a look at the big flagship GPP, the 150 max, uh, generally 50, 100K, sometimes the milli to first year. You can do this for any sport. I'm looking at NBA right now. We can look at NFL, anything, whatever sport that you're looking or you have questions about. And again, I'm going to this time here, go see what the most profitable 150 maxers did in this particular contest. And we see Shady Advice here right at the top. Shady's uh, in our Discord, a part of the Saberson community here, always very helpful in our Discord. I like to take a look at his lineups. Uh, Giant Squid is another one. I'm sure you've heard that name before. When I see him pop up here as the high sim ROI, I often like to take a look at their lineups as well and see uh, what uh, they did on that particular slate and what, what types of constructions were being used there. So we can click this magnifying glass here and we'll actually pull up Shady's real lineups that he played in this particular contest. But what you can do from here is start to look at individual player exposures. You can look at different team stacks or stack exposures, get whatever questions you had about the slate as you were building your lineups and get them answered and see what other sharp players did here in those spots. I don't know about you, but when I'm going through my build review revise process on every Every single slate, I ultimately always have a couple questions. As I'm reviewing, something will jump out to me. Maybe on that particular slate is a very low project, uh, a very um, low salary, high projected backup point guard that's thrown into the starting lineup, and we're expecting 50% ownership. And it's always hard to know is the 100% exposure that I'm getting right now, the right way to play this particular slate? Should I uh, try to use this as a leverage opportunity? Uh, I have those kinds of questions all the time. On this particular slate last night, Miami was really the only real source of value on the slate. I was very concentrated. I played a ton of Miami stacks and I was playing a lot more players from the same team that I'm normally accustomed to. And I wasn't sure if that was the right move. I wasn't sure how many Miami Heat I should play. Should I cap that? I ultimately decided I was just gonna let the Sims make that call and play a lot of Heat in a given lineup. And you can see, looking at Shady's lineups, that he did a similar thing. Uh, his second most popular stack type was a four stack in an NBA eight game slate, which I assume was almost, yeah, de definitely almost entirely coming from Miami here. Uh, so Shady did a similar thing. And I can use that as an opportunity to learn from that and say, okay, in situations where all the value on the slate is coming from one team, I can see another profitable player, a sharp player, the most profitable 150 maxer in this tournament last night also took that same approach and was willing to play up to four Miami Heat in a lineup. And this is just one example. Whatever it is, the questions that you have about lineup construction or how you should have gone about building your lineups for a particular slate, you can study other sharp players, see what the most sharp players did in a given contest and use that as an opportunity to learn from. Now, obviously, we only actually get to play every single slate once, so it's not like you can go back with the information you have now and replay the slate and change what you did. But you can use this to pick up on patterns. Over time, when you are checking your work, what what jumped out to you when you were doing your build, review, revise process? What questions did you have? Check the next day, what did other sharp players do? How did they handle the spots you were unsure about? And then use that as a tool to improve. And when you have similar decisions to make in the future, you can see, uh, you can apply what you've learned during your process of reviewing slates for building lineups for future slates. We run contest flashback here for all sports on SaberSim on DraftKings, and we grab almost every single contest in the lobby. So if you want to spend time instead diving into high stakes single entry or live qualifiers or whatever your particular DFS niche is that you want to do a little bit of research in, it can be a great way to spend some time, do a little bit of review, study, and improve your DFS process. I think a lot of our subscribers don't even really know that this feature exists. So that's part of why I wanted to get this video out there today. And I think a lot of our subscribers 
subscribers also don't realize that they probably are already playing in a profitable way. Contest flashback can just be a good way to get that mental check, make sure you're on the right track, and then figure out from other sharp players what are the ways to make the incremental improvements to bring that sim ROI up higher and higher as you continue to play DFS. Now, I hope this was a helpful introductory walkthrough of Contest Flashback. If you have any other questions for me about how to use this tool or any other parts of the SaberSim lineup building process, you can always reach out in our Discord server or by emailing us at support at sabersim.com. We also have a free trial on our site five days. You can check out Ultimate to get the Contest Sims. Contest Flashback is available to all SaberSim subscribers on any plan, so you can come check us out, uh, see how your lineups are grading out, no matter how you built them, using our Contest Sims and Contest Flashback here, and make sure that you're on the right track and playing profitably. In the meantime, I appreciate you all for watching, as always, and best of luck.